Take, we take a look at a couple now because we're in the era of the of the technocrats. In Athens, we had Papandreou of the Socialist International, Second International, an agent of Soros and the CIA, and and fr coming from a family which has been serving the British in Greece for 200 years at least, I would say. Papandreou was the one who carried out most of the austerity decrees of the International Monetary Fund, right? The Memorandum of Understanding. But then, at a certain point, the European Commission overthrew Papandreou when he proposed to save himself politically by having a referendum. He said, let's let the people vote on killer austerity and see if the Greek people want it. No, said Barroso, the Portuguese fascist at the European Commission, right, and his friend Ali Rain and the rest of them. So they, they basically did a coup d'etat against Papandreou. So who came in? They said they wanted a government of technocrats. So these are people who have no support from parties. And uh, the, the central one is this guy, Papademos, right now departed. Uh, Papademos, uh, I tried to coin the term Thanatos Demos, meaning Thanatos, death. So death of the people. <laughs> the death of the people was Thanatos Demos. Uh, and it has other, other meanings in, in Greek, I'm told. But who is this guy? He, his background is that he's from the Boston branch of the U.S. Federal Reserve. So that's who becomes the leader of Greece. And he's a technocrat because no party would support him. Then we go to the Italian case, even, even sadder in some ways. Because here we had somebody with some positive qualities, Berlusconi. What's with Berlusconi? The thing that got the uh, oligarchs going about Berlusconi was that he was Putin's close friend. You can listen, there are these tapes with Berlusconi entertaining this, um, what can we say, uh, prostitute in his, uh, in his residence. And he says, I'm going to go take a shower, darling, wait for me in Putin's bed. And she says, you mean Putin's bed? Yes, Putin's bed, the bed that Putin had given him as a, as a, as a present. So this has some real content, though, because we're talking about the South Stream pipeline. We're talking about a very important uh, natural gas pipeline coming from southern Russia and avoiding the belt of virulently anti-Russian sort of kamikaze NATO states, right? Not the Baltic states, not Poland, not uh, Belarus, uh, not Ukraine, not any of these people. But it goes from Russia to Turkey to, to uh, Italy. And it essentially means it's a source of, of natural gas which is reliable. So they wanted him out. Berlusconi was accused of becoming the lawyer for Putin inside the European Union, and he was. So out he goes, right? In this case, it was an attempted color revolution that never got off the ground. It was called the Purple Revolution, right? You had the Jasmine Revolution, the Orange Revolution, the Roses Revolution. This was the Purple Revolution in, uh, in Italy. So Berlusconi is out. Who is in? Mario Monti. Who is he? He's Mr. Goldman Sachs, Mr. Bilderberg, <laughs> and he becomes the prime minister of the country. So Goldman Sachs, the thieves, the asset strippers, the hyenas, the zombie bankers, responsible for so many crashes and now, you know, bearing a significant burden of the responsibility for the crash of 07, 08 in the United States and worldwide. They are brought in to exercise their superb technocratic judgment on how to get Italy out of this, this economic uh, crisis. So that's, that's Monti. We have a couple of other technocrats. Uh, in Spain, we have Rajoy. Rajoy, who comes from the Partido Popular, which is, well, it's the party that, that's it's what's left over after Franco, let's say. Uh, and it has many of those tendencies. He becomes the prime minister when uh, Zapatero is out. So he's a right winger. He's a reactionary. Who does he get to be his finance minister? He gets this guy, Guindos, who is from Lehman Brothers. The most bankrupt of all the banks in the world comes in to exercise expert technocratic judgment on what the Spanish uh, ought to do. Now, there's even more extreme form. When you look at... Um, the run-up to Hitler, 1933, you'll see that one of the key moments is the coup d'etat in Prussia. And Prussia had a minority government, Social Democrats, right? Otto Braun and Karl Severing. 
And one of the one of the things that sets the stage for Hitler is von Papen, the chancellor, pulls a coup d'état in Prussia, where he kicks out the Social Democrats who were fighting the Nazis to some extent, and puts in himself as the commissar so that he runs Prussia. And I, I cite this because when something like this happens, well, in, in, in that case, it meant that Hitler was six months away. Now, what do we see today? Let's look at Michigan. The fascist Republican governor, Rick Snyder, has something called the emergency manager law. It means that if he decides that a, that a city or a county or a school system is not being run well, he can send in a dictator, an austerity commissar. They take over everything. The mayor is out. The city council is out. The county council out. In comes the dictator, and the austerity decrees begin. So it's very similar to von Papen. Who's under this right now? Flint, Pontiac, Ecorse, the Detroit school system, the Highland Park school system. The city of Detroit itself is virtually under this. It, he, only, he, he keeps the, the, uh, the, the mayor and the city council as a kind of a facade, right, so that people don't get too, too excited. So that's one. Rajoy, in Spain, has passed a law saying that he can take over any of the Spanish regions. Uh, Spain, Spain is a regional state, right? They have Catalonia, right? They want in, increasing autonomy. They have the Basque country. But then they have Andalusia, right? Andalusia, southern Spain. Eight million. It's the biggest region. That is being run by socialists. And Rajoy now has a law that if he wants to, he can say to the elected socialist prime minister and, and, uh, and uh, little parliament in, in Andalusia, you're out and my dictator is going to come in and dictate austerity to you. These would be technocrats. And finally, the most technocratic of all, Trichet. This is the former head of the European Central Bank. He's been replaced by Mario Draghi of Goldman Sachs, yet another technocrat. But Trichet speaking at the Peterson Institute of International Economics here in Washington on the eve of the G8 in uh, May 2012. Trichet gave a speech saying, if we have European countries that refuse to carry out sound economic policies, we've got to be able to put them in receivership. And receivership means that the elected government of Portugal or Ireland or whoever it is, whoever, whoever they want to target, because they can decide themselves, that the elected government, the prime minister and the parliament are out and an austerity dictator goes in. So this tendency of technocrats, meaning unelected, unaccountable, non-political people who act as if economic questions were technical, this is now the path towards genocidal austerity and towards depopulation. Uh, in, in the advanced countries now, this is once again, this is not the Horn of Africa. This is now Western Europe and the United States, right? A place like Michigan, right? A place like, uh, like uh, Wisconsin in, in, in certain other respects. These are now under the gun of genocidal austerity in the name of technocratic rule because they really believe that economic decisions are they're purely technical. They're not political. That's also the philosophy of the Federal Reserve. It says that the, the main decision shouldn't really be made. We shouldn't have the, uh, the interest rates and the money supply and the approved categories of lending decided by a public law to the Congress and the President, which is the only thing we can really do under the existing system. But no, it's got to be decided secretly by groups of unelected, unaccountable, uh, really faceless bankers, right? 